my new theta, the probability of any sequence x1, x2, x3, and so on up to xn, where again I'm using the number k to represent the number of ones. This is what's called a Bernoulli source. Um, if there's k ones in here, what's the what's the probability of that? So uh, theta is the probability of one. So it's theta to the power of k. And there are n minus k zeros. That's one minus theta to the power of n minus k. Isn't there a combination? No, because this is a specific sequence. I'm not asking. Oh, um, you're not asking. No. Oh, just the number, orders. That's right. It's not the binomial distribution. So the binomial distribution asks, in the sequence, what's the probability of a specific k? I see. What I'm asking is, what's the probability of a specific sequence? So we can write that as the probability of x1, x2, x3, and so on up to xn, given theta. And that is equal to theta to the k, 1 minus theta to the n minus k. So what I'm going to say is, I don't know what theta is. What I'm going to do is I'm going to assign a probability to theta. And the notation says p x1. That's right. So this is the probability of the sequence given theta. Theta is my probability that x is 1. So um, what I know from probability is that p x1, x2, x3, and so on up to xn, if I want to get rid of that conditioning on theta, what I can do is this. I can integrate over theta. of x1, x2, and so on up to xn, given theta, is theta to the k, 1 minus theta to the n minus k. p theta is just 1 over theta equals 0 to 1 and 0 elsewhere, so that basically makes the limits of this integral 0 to 1. p theta. Um, I'll leave it as an exercise for you to work out. It turns out this integral can't be done in closed form. Actually, an exercise for you. It's, it's done in the book if you're so interested. It can't be done in closed form, but if you integrate by parts, you get the following recursion. Um, yes? How should we interpret the uh, p theta being uniform? Process-wise, what does how, how should I interpret that? Um, basically, you're saying you you I mean, physically we know theta can't take values outside of zero to one, okay. and what you're saying is you don't prefer. There's absolutely no preference amongst any value from zero to one. So 
So they're all they're all equally likely, you think, or you don't you don't know that any of them are more likely than any other. Um, so what you can do is you can set up a uh, you can set you can set this up integrating by parts, and the integrate uh, by integrating by parts, what you find is the following. So we'll let um, this integral, we'll define this as um, a n k. It's a function of n n k, so we'll call this a n k. And what we find is that if we integrate by parts, we get the following recursion. So it seems like this, um, this recursion will terminate at a and n. k will continue to increase until we get to n, at which point we have um, a and n is equal to, okay, if I substitute n in here, I have theta to the n, 1 minus theta to the 0. So that's the integral from 0 to 1 of theta to the n, d theta. What's the, what is the indefinite integral of theta to the n? And 1 over mon, <laughs> 1 over n plus 1 n times plus. Uh, raised to the uh, n plus 1. To the n plus 1, exactly. From 0 to 1. So if theta is uh, 1, this is just 1. If theta is 0, this is 0. So this is 1 over n plus 1. So basically, we, we have this recursion from n k up to n n, and the last term in the recursion is 1 over n plus 1. So what we will basically end up with is this. So a and k to n minus k over k plus 1 times a and k plus 1. But I can substitute that for um, n minus k plus 1 divided by, actually it's probably better to say this as n minus k minus 1 divided by k plus 2 a and k plus 2, and so on. Continuing to add terms in the recursion, I get n minus k, n minus k minus 1, n minus k minus 2, and so on, down to 1. And there are, there are clearly um, Clearly, the one occurs when um, k is equal to n minus. Excuse me. The, the one occurs after n minus k minus one term. So in the denominator, I have k plus one, k plus two. Three and so on, up to after n minus k minus one terms, I end up with k plus n minus k minus one plus one, which is equal to n. So basically, in the in the numerator, I'm counting down from n minus k down to one. In the denominator, I'm counting up from k plus 1 to n. And then in the end, this is multiplied by a and n.